Hi, I'm Kazu. Today we're gonna implement hand detection using P5 and another framework called MediaPipe. The model is built on top of TensorFlow and it's very precise and works smooth. Even when I make rocks and scissors, the model still estimates hiding points of my fingers. But in spite of the spec, it's a very lightweight, which is nearly 30 frames per second on P5 project on my 4 years old MacBook Pro. So it's really suitable applying on creative coding. This model is available on MediaPipe and mlfab.js. MediaPipe is a cross-platform machine learning framework, allows many kinds of detections. And here's the model we're gonna use. MLFab.js is another machine learning library for JavaScript. It's developed to smoothly work with p5.js and this is different name but the model inside is exactly the same. As a p5 coder, I wanted to introduce mlfab.js hand pose in this video, but with this, the model is limited to detect one single hand at a time, whereas MediaPipe hands allows multiple detection on the same time, so I decided to use MediaPipe for this video. So let's actually implement. Here's my blank project file. I have HTML and JS file. In the HTML file, I have two CDN links of p5.js. So at first, I need to put other CDNs of MediaPipe hands. At MediaPipe hands page, we see a quick implementation by JavaScript and HTML. So I grab those CDN links and paste here. I'm gonna grab this script too. And down the size a little bit for make it lighter. For now I set like 640 and 480. Okay, let's run it once. Okay, now we succeed to run the model. In this HTML, we created a video and a canvas object. Inside the JavaScript, we store those two elements in these two variables. Then we declare the hands detection model and start video streaming at here. This is a config function, we set some parameters of functions. Maximum numbers of hands to detect. Well, I'm alone in this room now, so I leave this too. Mean detection confidence. Machine learning model output the confidence score of each estimation. And the score value is always 0 to 1. When we set the threshold 0 0.5, then we'll only take result above 0 0.5. The rest will be abandoned. Mean tracking confidence. Well, I guess this model uses object tracking along with hand detection. It doesn't run hand detection at every single frame. Instead, once detect single or multiple hands from next frame, just tracking it. But when the model lost the tracking, execute the hand detection again. And after set those parameters, I guess this is the function execute the detection. I mean, estimation itself. When the model got result, give the data to callback function. Uh, this function. Inside that, clear previous background and redraw video streaming on canvas, then draw green lines and red dots, the landmarks, okay? So next, what we're gonna do is combine this model with p5.js. We don't wanna draw landmarks with native JavaScript. Instead, we just wanna receive the coordinates from the model and give it to a variable in p5 canvas. Let me show you how I do that. First, I clean up this unneeded canvas drawing relevant. I also delete this.
Okay. And let's make a global variable and store result data out here. By the way, I don't make sense why they named this callback function like exactly the same this detect function. That might be a problematic. So I changed this like got hands. Okay, let's see what's inside of the data. data type is JS object and inside that we see an array that ranks of 2. I open that. Yes, those XYZ 3D coordinates are what we want and it's in small JS object. Okay, we got three, three coordinates values in 21 JS object in an array that length of 2 in a JS object. It's a bit complicated, right? But we need to remember the structure. That's important when we refer those coordinates from p5.js later. So I recommend you to take a screenshot once so that you don't forget. Next, we finally implement p5 part. As you guys realized, it looks different from usual. I introduce you something called p5.js instance mode, in case you don't know. At default, p5.js is global mode, which means you can call all of p5 functions at the entire JS file, right? However, this often causes problems when we combine p5 with another libraries or frameworks for playing JavaScript due to p5.js works a little bit differently from JS native. Instance mode is a solution for that. In instance mode, p5 doesn't exist globally. We can use p5 functions only in this little container. Okay, So it doesn't conflict with functions of another libraries, but still be able to exchange data with another libraries through those global variables, which is great. And don't forget to put this argument, p, uh, actually whatever is okay, this argument in, in front of every p5 functions like this. By the way, let's split the model part and p5 part by separating the files for convenience. and move this model part to here. And add HTML of that file. Let's implement landmarks inside this p5.js. Okay, I explained those codes. First, this clear is a p5 function 
draws transparent background at every frame. And since we are in P5 WebGL mode, um, the origin of the coordinates move to center of the canvas. So I kind of repositioning the origin to top left, okay? And if the detection, oh, if the landmarks data and the whole data isn't undefined, I mean when the data available, then draw points on every coordinates of every detected hand, okay? So let's run it. Yep, it's working fine. But because of the video and the canvas are different HTML elements, so we need to adjust the position by adding piece of CSS. Okay, first I attach ID to the two elements to allow us to manipulate from CSS. The element name dot ID. Actually, I changed this class to ID. So this too. Next, I make a CSS file. And link it here. In this CSS file, I add two properties, position and g-index. The position property determines how the element is positioned in this HTML page. And z-index determines the z-ax values, the depth of each element. The number is bigger the prioritized to come to front. Okay, run it again. Yeah, so far so good. Okay, at this point, we finished to make a piece of cake itself. I still continue to make the cake looks a little bit more delicious. For example, let's add lines between those landmarks. In the media pipe page, we see how those points ordered in the array of coordinates, right? So based on this, I'm going to implement the lines between those points exactly like this. Okay, I explained this my function. First, I pass small array through this argument, index, right? Those values uh, indicate chunks that I want to connect. For example, um, this 0, 5, 9, 13, 17, and 0 means perm, okay? And for every hand detected, connect the specified points with specified order by drawing a line, okay? 
run it. Well, this might be a little bit tricky way to implement, but with this method, I realize um, we can easily play like this. Uh, for example, um, what if, ah, let's say, um, what if I connect tips of my every or my fingers, like webbing? Let's do that. I just add one line of code. Yep. <laughs> what do you think? It's fun, right? Ah. Oh, by the way, um, some of you might notice that sometimes, yeah, this invisible hands touching on your face. Ah. It's not supernatural, it's not, but still uncomfortable, right? even though it's just an error of machine learning model. But uh, all we need to do is up this threshold, detection confidence. For now, let's up to this 0 0.8 reload. Oh. Ah, okay. Exorcism complete. Let's draw landmarks by its fingers for be able to more customizable, just like these draw lines. Okay, first I change the color mode out here to HSV for convenience. And this function, this function works almost exactly the same way as draw lines, but I pass through one another value and use this as few value out here. looks a bit more beautiful. I add some CSS to make it look a little bit more fancier. Oh, what about draw black background instead of a transparent? What it looks like? Ah, that's funny. Okay, this is the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching so far. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.